Hello, my dear listeners. It's my pleasure again to come to you with video 9 of this, our new series, which is the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. We have been examining Revelation 21 and we'll proceed to Revelation 22. Uh, we had just seen at the beginning of Revelation 21 that once the, the judgment of the world is over, there will be the creation of a new heaven and a new earth, and that the city of God, the new Jerusalem, the holy city, is going to descend from heaven and land upon the earth. And with it, it's cried that the dwelling of God is with men, and God will live with us here on earth physically. In the person of Jesus and we will see him and he will be our God and we will be his people and this theme is repeated throughout scripture which we are not going to go back to unfold that, to, to unravel that and then it says in verse 4 of Revelation 21 that God is going to wipe away every tear from our eye and to comfort those who mourn, there will be no more death or crying or weeping. For the old order of things, everything as you know in this life as we have it today, will pass away. Which is when God says, forget the past. In verse 5, we read that he who is seated on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. And before we begin to examine what new things await those who believe or await the earth, we are going to take some time and examine what is the throne of God. It says, He who is seated on the throne. He who is seated on the throne. What is a throne? You know, the Bible was written, or the last book of the Bible was written about 1,900 years ago, or let's just say 2,000 years ago. And concepts as they were then are not communicated exactly the same to us today in, in our languages. You know, when we speak of a throne, what comes to your mind? It's a seat of authority. It's, it's a, of a ruler, of an emperor, or of a king. And... In our days, the seat of a president, the ruler of a nation. And today in our world, we have close to 200 nations. And each of these nations have a president or a prime minister. So who sits on the throne? And in another level, there are some specific thrones that I will mention to you. For instance, Beijing. Moscow, London, <clears throat> and Washington DC. These are thrones. And for the past few decades, the throne of America or the White House is that highest throne that reigns over all the other thrones on the earth. And currently, as we speak, there's a juggling of power is it going to be Russia, uh, Moscow higher, or is it going to be Beijing? Or is it going to be Beijing and Moscow higher than the United States? Which is why the world is in tumult and we have all this fighting, jostling here and there. But now we are talking of the throne of God, which is far more greater than these thrones that we are talking about. One thing I want to communicate to you is that when we're talking about the throne of God and Jesus sitting on the throne, we are not just talking on the spiritual realm. We're talking on the physical realm that Jesus will rule this world and with his people who follow him, who are born again, and his authority will be far greater than the authority that comes from the White House or from the Kremlin or from Beijing. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're waiting. That's what is going to actually happen upon this earth. In Isaiah 16 verse 15, the Bible tells us that in love 
a throne will be established. And a man, a man, remember Jesus is a man and Jesus is God. A man will sit on it from the house of David. One who in judging seeks justice and pleads the cause of righteousness. A, man, a throne will be established upon the earth and a man will sit on it. Colossians chapter 1 beginning from verse 15 shows us the preeminence of Jesus and his throne. First of the first of the first of everything else. He said he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. Yes, whether they be thrones or powers or rulers or authorities whether it be the White House the Kremlin or Beijing or the King of England these were created by him and for him in that therefore he will reign over all of them and I'm going to point out in the next video your place as someone who believes in him in this kingdom in Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 we're told that the seventh angel will sound his trumpet and loud voices are going to proceed out of heaven crying the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of God and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. Now the, the, the kingdoms of this world, whether it be the United Nations of whether there be 200 of them, Jesus is going to show forth and will sit as ruler over all these nations. This is the entire plot of the Bible. We had examined this sometime in Daniel chapter 2 verses 35 and to, to 34 to 35 which says that a rock was going to be cut out not with human hands that will crush all this current civilization and in its place the kingdom of God will rise and cover the entire earth and Jesus will be the king of kings over these nations one thing I want us to understand is that ancient Israel was promised and always looked forward to a physical king on earth and when Jesus came that was their anticipation and that anticipation will be fulfilled when Jesus is revealed again and he will establish a kingdom, a physical kingdom upon this earth. It says in Isaiah 9 verse 7 that of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end and he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. In First Chronicles 29 verse 23, we learn there that the throne of the king of Israel was also called the throne of God. So let's try to understand this here. I am saying that a throne that is higher than the White House, the Kremlin, and Beijing is going to be established upon this earth and someone will sit on it who is Jesus Christ and that this throne will reign over all the nations. We're speaking physical here. We're speaking physical here, not just spiritual. And Jesus intimated this when he was with his disciples upon the earth in Matthew 25, 31 to 32, he says, when the Son of Man comes in his heavenly glory, he will sit upon his throne and all the nations 
all the nations will be gathered before him. Psalms 110 tells us that the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Now, the idea of a right hand means a place of ultimate authority. And scripture tells us over and over again in the book of Acts and the book of Hebrews that Jesus, after he resurrected, sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven in the place of ultimate authority. This authority is exercised now spiritually, but when the kingdom of God is established upon the earth, that authority will come out in the open. And lastly, the throne of God is characterized by these qualities which are qualities that are far-fetched of any ruler upon the planet today. They fall short. It says the throne will be established in truth, humility, justice, righteousness, fairness, faithfulness, peace, prosperity, and glory, and in all wisdom and long life. Jesus will be the world emperor. In our next video, we're going to see what is your place. And I'm going to give you just a tidbit. Jesus Christ says in Revelation 3, 21, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat with my father on his throne. You could sit on the throne of God, that throne that is greater than the highest presidency in this world. Would you? Would you want to? Stay tuned for the next video and we will see what you need to do to qualify to sit on that throne. Thank you and goodbye.